Hey everyone, let's talk about subtraction with ungrouping. I'm Shannon Keebler with Empower Consulting, and I'm excited to talk about a few ways that our students in second, third, and on up might choose to subtract when there's ungrouping involved. Don't forget to follow me on the social media platforms listed below, and let's get started. So first we're going to talk about add-ins to 100. When we look at numbers such as uh, an equation possibly like this, we have 83 minus, let's say 59. We first want students, I write it horizontally because I want students just to think about what they know about those numbers. What I don't want is I don't want students automatically going to stacking numbers and doing an algorithm if really mental math could solve this or they have a way to count up or add on with especially with sums up to 100. So uh, we know that that skill, decomposing numbers and adding up or um, subtracting is really a great mental strategy that we want to foster. So that will prevent things from happening like when we see problems uh, such as 200 minus 1 and students end up stacking those numbers and now they have to ungroup over double zeros, right? That's about this idea that we're not thinking reasonable. We're not looking at what those numbers are, what those relationships are, and how we might solve this without doing an algorithm. An algorithm should really be saved for complex numbers when doing that in our head or doing some sophisticated mental math is going to take us longer or is more pr prone to computational inaccuracies. So we're going to first just talk about this adding up idea. And we're going to have kids, um, if we did it, let's just say in um, a math mountain, right? So we have 83 as our total. So this is a total. This is a partner. And we are looking for our other partner. So I have 59 as my partner. I want to know what this is. And how might students use this problem to think through solving for my unknown partner? So I might say, I might have a student that says, well, I know that 59 and I add 1, I get to 60. And then I start from 60 and I say 70, 80, and now I'm at 80, and I count on from ones again, 81, 82, 83. And then I count up everything I added, 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. My total is 24. Or I might have students that say, well, I like to add by tens first. So they might say 59, 69, 79. Right, I get it here at 79, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83. They might do that some something like that where they still get 24 here. Either way, students are going to see this in a variety of ways, but I want them to look at the relationship of these numbers and decide what's reasonable and could I get an answer other than having to stack those numbers. So now let's try the expanded. If I did a problem like 64 minus 28. So I could, of course, think about I have 64 as my total, one of my partners is 28, and I can count on 28, 29, 30, and now I can do 30, 40, 50, 60, and then one, two, three, four. So I would know that my total is 30, one, two, three, four, five, six, 36. Or I can see these numbers and think, well, they're not as friendly. I could expand them and know that 64 is the same as 60 plus four and 28 is the same as 20 plus eight. I really like this strategy for students that have a hard time holding place value. And because a lot of kids will say, well, six minus two, and they forget that this number is actually a 10 and that this number is our tens as well. So expanded helps them to not have to hold on to that place value. In addition to that, um, it's going to help them to see what they're actually ungrouping. So my suggestion here is to actually start with the proof um, drawing, not with the algorithm. So if I took the total I have, remember in a subtraction equation, we'll change my color here, I only have the total. And that's probably the most common error I see is that students will draw 64 and they draw 28. In a subtraction problem, I don't have the 28. I am taking the 28 from the 64. So this math mountain constantly putting this subtraction equation back on the math mountain is going to help them to see the relationship of those numbers. So let's do 64, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, pause. 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. 
And now I know I have to take away 28. So I could, and this is what kind of uh, blows the mind of those of us who grew up doing the traditional algorithm is that we would never have started on the left and then gone on the right. But the reality is they could start on the left if they wanted to. If they want to take away two tens, they should, by all means, they could do that now. But I'm going to start with these ones and I'm going to say, well, I have four ones and I need to take away eight. I don't want to say, can I do it? Because the answer is yes. If I have 64, you better believe I can take away eight ones. So to say we can't take away eight is misleading what is actually happening in this problem. I have 64, I for sure can take away 28, but my problem is they're currently in a group of 10. I don't have enough ungrouped here. So if you think about kindergarten, when we said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we grouped it into a 10, and now we have a 10 stick, we practice that over and over again in kindergarten and first grade. And now we're saying, but what if I put it in a group and I'm saying, well, wait a minute, I don't want it in a group anymore. I want to ungroup it and get my ones back. That's what we're looking for. So do I have eight ones? Yes. Are they in the group of 10? Yes. So I am going to ungroup, and I'm actually gonna change my colors here so we can see it. I'm going to ungroup my 10, and I'm gonna use an X to do that. An X always means to ungroup, and I'm going to ungroup it to my 10 ones. Now, if you put them horizontally or you put them vertically, it doesn't matter. In fact, students should just do what comes naturally to them, how they see it. Some kids can see easier their five groups when they're horizontally in a 10 frame versus um, vertically and vice versa. So I want students to do what they naturally see. So I had four ones, and let's do over here now what I actually did in my problem. I had 60, and I ungrouped it, and now I only have 50, five tens, and so I gave those 10 ones to my four. I really have 14 ones. So you can see with that method, I can see everything that I did. I, it, everything maintains its value. So I'm over here, and I ungrouped a 10, and now I have 10 ones, and now I'm going to subtract... Um, eight of them. So I can take away eight however I see it. I could do five and then three. I could do five uh, or four here and four up here. However kids want to take it away, it doesn't really matter. So I had 14 ones and I took away eight of the ones. So let's see what I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six ones left. Now I have five tens and I have to take away two tens. So a minus sign means subtract. And how many tens do I have? Three tens. And let's count that. 10, 20, 30. And 30 plus 6 equals 36. So my suggestion here is actually to start every single one of these methods, we'll change our color here, to only the proof picture. If they can do it just with the proof picture, then I can show them numerically what's happening because our standard says they do have to relate it to a written method. Now, their written method does not mean they have to relate it to the standard algorithm. That is not second grade standard. So they just need to have a written method. So expanded form would definitely work for that. The picture shows that we understand what's happening. So I would say I had six tens and I ungrouped one for 10 ones. I subtracted eight ones and then I subtracted two tens. I had three tens left, which is 30. Working on that precise language is going to be pretty important. So now let's try a new way. Let's try 164 and we're going to subtract, uh, well actually let's make that 264 minus 188. So again I'm going to put it on my math mountain. I have 264 as my total, 188 is one of my partners, I'm looking for my other partner. So when I have 264, I'm going to do my uh, magnifying glass, this is the number I have. I only have 200, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, pause, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. So one of the methods that students start to practice with or just learn about is they could do all of their ungrouping at once. So they could say, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup a 10 and I'm going to get my 10 ones. I'm going to ungroup a 100. I'm going to get my 10 tens. And now let's see if I'm going to have enough. So if I have 
um, four tens, now I have 14, excuse me, four ones, now I have four, 14 ones. Um, over here at my picture, can I take away my eight? I sure can. I have eight tens that I have to take away. Do I have enough to over here ungroup to take away my eight tens? I do. So now that all the ungrouping is done, I can do uh, my math over here. So really what I did is I ungrouped uh, the six tens, and so I only had five tens. I had that 10 ungrouped and the 10 ones, so now I have 14 ones. I have five tens, and that wasn't enough to take away eight ungrouped tens, so I ungrouped the two hundreds. That means I had one hundred, and if I took that hundred and ungrouped it, it gave me ten tens, which means now I actually had fifteen tens. So if I have fifteen tens, now I can do all my subtraction. So fourteen minus eight, I can take away my eight, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six left. I have 15 minus eight tens. I can take away my eight, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see how much I have left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tens. I have one ten, take away a hundred. I now have zero hundreds. Let's make sure we're right. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. Check, my picture matches my algorithm. So what's interesting here is that technically, I could have subtracted from the right to the left. I could have said 14 minus eight equals six, which is what I did, or I could have gone from the left to the right. So when they ungroup everything at once, I could have said one, my 100 minus 100 equals zero hundreds, 15 tens minus eight tens equals seven tens, 14 ones minus eight ones equals six tens. So they start to learn I could have subtracted from the left to the right or from the right to the left, I will get the same answer if I ungroup everything at once. So students really get to decide how they do it. But the big push here for most is that they start with the picture so they really understand what's happening and then they learn to attach it to a written method. Because again, students need to have a written method for this. So they could go step by step. Now they could do 100 minus 88. They could do, I have 200, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. They could subtract 188 by um, starting with, well, I have four ones minus eight ones. I'm going to ungroup in my tens into 10 ones, which means I ungrouped my six tens and I now have five tens and I gave the 10 to my four, which means I have 14 ones. 14 minus eight, I could do that step all at once. So you can see here, I'm not gonna go through that entire method, but you can see that they can go step by step. They do something in their numbers, then they do it in their drawing, or they do something in their drawing, and then they do it to their numbers. Um, so students just need to pick which way they like. When they show all these various ways of ungroup everything, ungroup left to right, ungroup right to left, that's really just building flexibility with students. That it doesn't matter which way you go once you've done your ungrouping. So students just really need to decide for themselves which way are they the most successful and that they maintain their own place value understanding. So I hope that gives you a start to subtraction with ungrouping. Um, we ungroup those numbers, we do an X for ungrouping, we do a subtraction sign for a minus sign for subtracting. Um, and again, if we show it on a math mountain, then they see the relationship of the numbers so they can see technically I could add on and do this in my head, or I can learn how to ungroup and do my subtraction the other way. So if you liked this video, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, my friends. I'll see you at empowerlearngrow.com where I am sharing a subtraction freebie sheet that will show you all the different methods um, in one single place. Thanks, everyone.